योगः कर्मसु कौशलम हेलो वेलकम एवरीवन माय सेल्फ इज डॉक्टर किशोर कुमार सिपोरिया आई एम वर्किंग एज अ प्रोफेसर एंड हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स वीर नर्मद साउथ गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी सूरत गुजरात स्टेट टुडे इज टॉक इज ऑन द Uh, states of uh, matter so we during our school days uh, we had learn a lot more about the different states of uh, matter so some of the knowledge is only the repetitions of our uh, uh, primary knowledge or we can say the repetitions of the uh, previous knowledge but at the same time i am also directed you that i will uh, add the more knowledge in this uh, resi or we can say the advanced uh, knowledge uh, in uh, on this topic so the topic is in the state of matter we all are aware that the character of the phase uh, depends on the nature and the distribution of their uh, component and on the basis of that we can classify the states of matter into the different three groups one is to be called as a classical state in which the solid liquid and gas are there the other state of matter is to be called as a high temperature state in which we have the plasma and the quark gluon plasma the third type of uh, state of matter is the low temperature state in which the bose einstein condensed matter state and the fermion uh, fermionic condensed state are incorporated so uh, we will uh, look all these uh, six states with a greater detail uh, in this session we can also classify the states of matter on the basis of on the particle arrangement uh, we have the solid liquid and gas based upon the energy of the particles again we have the plasma and the quark gluon play, uh, plasma and the based upon the distance between the particles we have the bose einstein condensed state and the fermi dirac condensed state and the one more class of state of matter is to be called as an degenerate matter and in this class many newer and newer types of state of matter are added now uh, we look all the uh, uh, three basic uh, states of matter with the basic uh, details as i know that this is the revision of our uh, primary knowledge on this uh, basic classical states so the solid state how the particles of the solids are very tightly packed in the case of the solids the vibrating about a fixed position the solids have definite shape and definite volume because the particles are locked into the space uh, into the place solids are not easily compressible because there is a very little free space between the particle solids do not flow easily because the particle can cannot move or the slide uh, past one another so this is the arrangement of the atoms in the case of the solids we all are familiar all the atoms are very closely spaced and these are the examples of the some solid materials we can consider the salt is a solid by the same way diamond is a also a solid material we are very much aware that which other uh, uh, examples are may exist in the real world so when we look for the structures of the solid it is a very fundamental state of a matter they possess the rigidity they maintain their shape and volume solid state have the crystalline structures we will discuss that the solid state is again classified into the different four classes they have the short and the long range arrangement of atoms molecules and the ions and generally to avail the information about the crystal state uh, crystalline state we all are aware that the xrd is one of the basic uh, tool 
or it is a primary stool to understand the structures of a crystalline state. The other state is to be called as an amorphous state. They do not have any arrangements or the regular repetitions of the atom is not there in the case of the amorphous. We can take an example of an amorphous phase. The glass is the most suitable example for the state. And generally in the case of the amorphous phase, the long range order are not uh, uh, are uh, always the absent. We also having the polycrystalline phase in which the domains of the crystalline crystallinity is observed, the material separated by the grain boundaries, and sometimes the state is also to be called as a super cold liquid state, or in which we having the crystalline domain. So we all are familiar with the definitions of a crystal. Crystal is nothing but it is a three-dimensional arrangement of an atom molecule or the group of molecules. And we all are aware that in the case of the crystalline material, we are having the lattice and the brevis lattice and so on. So basic solid-state physics is deals with the uh, structures of the crystals. So this is the true for the small molecule, the crystals and the large molecules also. So when we look for the crystals, the simple, uh, what you can say, structures like diamond, uh, CDS and the sodium chlorides, these are the simple uh, structures. But in the case of the macromolecular structure, the protein, the lipid, uh, then uh, cholesterol. So these are the macromolecular structures and they're also having the uh, crystalline uh, behavior. So this is the arrangement of the crystalline and the non-crystalline, or we can say the amorphous phase. In the case of the crystalline phase, all the atoms are regularly arranged. In the case of the amorphous phase, the atoms are not regularly arranged. They are random in nature. And it is possible to synthesize the single crystals in the figure. I demonstrated some of the real photographs of the single crystals. We can synthesize, we can grow the crystals in the laboratory. And generally these crystals are, are what can say explained with the help of the seven uh, system, uh, seven brevis lattice systems. And we all are familiar with this basic knowledge. We also aware that the diamond having the special type of the structure. Nowadays, in the case of the crystalline material, as I mentioned, that the some of the macromolecules uh, structures are also possible. They're also having the crystalline structure. And the protein having the many chains. If you look for the carbohydrates and so on, at the place of have one per long chain, they're having the different type of the chains. And these structures are also possible to determine by using the sophisticated tools. So these are the, some of the photographs of the single crystals grown in the laboratory. Uh, in uh, uh, in a, uh, They are synthesized uh, by the different crystal growth methods. These are the more photographs in which we can see that it is possible to, what you can say, grow the single crystals in the laboratory for the simple uh, structure to the uh, complex structures. Uh, so this is the amorphous structures in which we can see that the crystallinity is not observed, all the atoms are random, and the majority of the structure, structures of the rock and the stones and the granite, the crystals are, uh, they're not having the crystalline structure, they're having the amorphous structures. So when we look for the uh, crystal growth, at the time of the crystal growth, we are aware that the crystals having a two-dimensional arrangement as well as the three-dimensional arrangement. But if we look for the one-dimensional arrangement, a uh, certain type of the crystals are to be called as dendrites. So uh, the directional growth gives the th tree-like structures. And if we combine the dendrites, it will give us the grains. Uh, the one more type of the structures which may be visualized in the case of the solids, they are to be called as spherulite growth. So spherulite growth is an n-dimensional uh, growth in which the uh, chain folded grains are observed. So these are the uh, photographs of the uh, dendr dendritic uh, growth, as well as these are the photographs of the spirulites growth. So spirulites having the n dimensions and dendrites have the one dimensional arrangement. So now the second state of a matter is to be called as a liquid. This is again a classical state. The particles of the liquids are tightly packed, but uh, 
that they are far enough apart to slide over one another. The liquids have an indefinite shape and the definite volume. Liquids have the indefinite shape because the particles can slide past one to the other. Liquid have one free surfaces. The liquids are not easily compressible and have a definite volume because there is a little free space between the particle. The liquid flows easily because the particles can move slide uh, past one to the other. So this is the arrangement of the liquid uh, atoms are arranged uh, randomly in the case of a liquid with comparison to the solid phase. And we are aware that the distance between the atoms are uh, what you can say non-uniform. Some of the atoms are very closely spaced. Some of the atoms are little bit at a larger distance and the atom can easily flow. So the fluidity is a one basic and important properties of the uh, liquid. We can take uh, the many examples of the liquid, uh, water, kerosene, the FeCl3 and so on. So this is the basic classification of the liquid, the liquid having the monophasic uh, uh, phase and they also having the biphasic uh, liquid. So in the case of this mono, uh, monophasic, we have the solution, draft, drops, then uh, linksers, syrup, and uh, in the case of the special uses, yeah, they are used in the oral cavity, they are used in the another than the cavity. So when we look for the biphasic phase, the liquid in liquid is to be called as a biphasic phase, they are to be called as an emulsion, and I will give you a little bit more information about the emulsion at the appropriate uh, period of this lecture. The solid in the liquids, they are to be called as a suspension, and we'll also look for at the time of the uh, colloidal state, I will give a little bit more information about uh, such phases in the case of the liquid. So liquid is an isotropic and they have the capacity to flow. They are also dense. They're having the low compressibility. Their inter, uh, intermolecular forces are existed in the case of the uh, liquid. Now, to understand the liquid, the, uh, the theory is developed and they are to be called as an Ehrings theory. I will not go in much details related to this, but I will give you the fragments of this Ehring theory in which we have an intermediate state between the static uh, phase. The static phase is to be called as a crystalline phase. And when we look for the dynamic phase, the gas is a dynamic phase. So liquid is the intermediate state between the solid and the uh, gas. Uh, it is an isotropic material in which we having the extended lattice, uh, lattice structure, the long range atomic arrangement is there, uh, the density of the liquid is one tenth of the solid phase, the molecules can flow, they are also having the low potential energy. So if I take the XRD of a liquid, what will happen? Okay, so we all are aware that in the case of the solid state, uh, solid state the N lambda is equal to 2D is widely used. But in the case of the liquid, uh, the theta is not uh, well defined. And due to this reason, at the place of these linear distances, we having the angular uh, distances. And due to this reason, when we take the XRD of a liquid, they will give us the uh, confusive uh, photographs. Uh, so when we look for these, the N lambda is equal to 2D sine theta. The atoms are separated by the various values of the D. So D is not a, a, or, or a constant. The D is a variable quantity. It can be a function of uh, uh, R, or it is a function of the radius of an atom. So liquids are the disorder. We are, how you can say, it, it will prove that the liquids are the uh, disorder. Now, this is the theory in which we can understand the structures of the liquid or the XRD patterns of the uh, liquid. So the XRD patterns, yeah, the, this is the real photographs of the uh, sodium uh, liquid. If you take a sodium liquid and take an XRD of the sodium liquid, this kind of the figure is uh, observed. You can see that the fringes are not uh, regular. They are very, uh, what you can say, fusy, or they are not what you can say, uh, clearly visualized. By the same way, the lower patterns is also irregular patterns is observed in the case of the uh, XRD patterns of a liquid. So this is the uh, real photographs of the uh, sodium liquid XRD patterns. Uh, these are the other what you can say liquid uh, in which we can see that what type of the patterns are uh, visualized. Uh, this is the 
uh, what you can say, the XRD patterns of the uh, benzene, we are aware that the, the structures of the benzene is uh, always the cyclic. So when we look for to understand the, the uh, liquid phase, uh, generally with the help of this XRD uh, pattern, we can say that only the large uh, uh, short range forces are existent in this case. They also having the low energy path. This uh, theory okay, is uh, uh, proposed uh, by uh, Professor Ehring and he has used the word the holes. So okay, we can avail the holes flow in the case of the uh, liquid and due to this reason, they are having the fluidity and uh, so on. Now we are looking for the third phase of a, uh, the classical phase of a uh, matter. This phase is to be called as an gases. The particles of the gases are very far apart and move freely. Gases have no free space. Uh, gases have an indefinite space and indefinite volume because the particles can move fast one another. The gases are easily compressible because there is a great deal of the free space between the par particles. The gas flows are very easily because the particles randomly move one to the other. Uh, so this is the, in the case of the uh, gas, the, all the particles are randomly oriented. They do not having the fixed shape. They are not having the fixed volume. Molecules are far apart. Force of the attraction is least. Freedom of the movement is maximum. They are also having the high kinetic energy and it also having the uh, maximum uh, diffusion. And the atoms are random in the case of the gases. Uh, so if we all are familiar uh, with all these three laws, the Boyle's law, Charles' law, and Avogadro law. And by using this, we can write the equations for the ideal gas equations is given by the PV is equal to NRT. So this is very basic information about the uh, classical phase of the matter. This is the revision of our uh, school days. Now I, I, I will give an, another state of a matter. This state is to be called as a uh, plasma state. So as the plasma state is concerned, it is a high temperature state uh, as the, the state of matter is concerned. The plasma have an indefinite shape and uh, an indefinite volume uh, because the particles can move past one another. A plasma is an ionized gas. Plasmas are easily compressible because there is a great deal of free space between the particle. The plasmas are good conductors of electricity and are also affected by the magnetic field because they are composed of an ions. So plasma having the positively charged ions as well as the negatively charged, uh, sorry, uh, negatively charged electrons and the positively charged uh, nuclei. And the size of these ions are uh, uh, very large as well as uh, very small. So this is the, uh, what you can say, photograph in which we can understand that what is there in the case of the plasma, all the ions are free to move. There is no any attractive force between the positive ion and the negative ion because they are also not in the same shape. The, the valency is not much more important in the case of an uh, plasma. So these are the, some of the examples of the plasma. We can see the plasma in the magnetic confinement fusion nebula, solar corona, solar wind, uh, interstellar space, or, or uh, even in the case of the lightning, even in the case of the neon sign, uh, we can see the plasma. And as the density of the plasma is concerned, it varies between the 10 raised to 3 to 10 raised to 33. The temperature of the plasma is also varied uh, from 100 degree temperature to 10 raised to 8 degree uh, temperature. Uh, so uh, the, we can easily understand the plasma by uh, using this uh, 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 transparency. You can see that if we raise the temperature or the energy of the solid, it is converted into the liquid. Again, if we increase the energy or the temperature, it is converted into the gas. Now, if we increase the temperature or energy, it will give us the uh, plasma state. So when we plasma is considered sometimes as a fourth state of matter uh, despite through the solid liquid and the gas, it is one of the fundamental states of a matter. Technically, it is an ionized gas consists of the positive and the positive ions and the electrons in proportion resulting in more or less uh, no overall electric charge, typically at the low pressure or at a very high temperature. The plasma should be sometime, the plasma is also to be called as a first state of matter because all the matter may uh, comes uh, e e from the uh, uh, state, arises from the plasma uh, state. 
So why is plasma is to be considered as a fourth state of matter? Because the characteristics of the plasmas are significantly different from those of the ordinary natural gases, so that the plasmas are considered a distinct or a fourth state of matter. For example, because the plasmas are made up of an electrical charge, they are strongly influenced by the electric as well as the magnetic field, while the neutral gases uh, are not. It behavior doesn't uh, resemble uh, with any other state of a matter. It is significantly unique. And due to this reason, it is to be considered as a fourth state of matter. And it is to be said that 99% of the uh, matter of the universe is uh, made from the uh, plasma state. So I think uh, it is a great tribute to a great uh, uh, physicist uh, from the Gujarat state, uh, Professor P. K., late Professor P. K. Ko. He was the founder member of the uh, Indian uh, Plasma Research Institute. He's, it is located in our Gujarat state and he has developed a, a huge things, huge instrumentation at the uh, IPR. Uh, so I had also attended a few lectures of uh, uh, Professor P. K. Ko. Uh, he is to be considered as a one giant uh, scientist uh, of the country, not only the country, it is an international reputed uh, scientist. Uh, so we can avail the plasmas in the case of the flames, we can avail the plasmas in the uh, lightning, even in the case of the uh, uh, sun, okay, the corona of the sun uh, consists of a uh, plasma. Even in the case of the galaxies, the center and the sides of the galaxies are also made up of a plasma. Uh, so when we look for the plasma, okay, which state is to be considered as a plasma state? So there are the different four criteria. If these uh, four criteria are followed, the state is to be uh, called as a plasma state. The plasma is the is that the linear dimensions of the L of the system uh, should be large in comparison with the uh, d by length. So this is the first criteria. If this criteria is followed, means all the four criteria are followed, the state is to be called as a plasma state. The second criteria is given by the D is greater than or equal to three by four pi n zero is to one upon three, where n zero is the number of the particles per unit volume. And the third criteria for the existence for the plasma is that it must be approximately neutral, means the positive ions and the negative ions, they are nearly equal in the case of an uh, plasma. Now the fourth is the uh, the frequency of this called uh, plasma frequency is represented by the VP is however damped by the collision oscillation between the ions and electrons. The degree of the damping depending on the collision frequency, this collision frequency is given by the VC, plasma frequency is given by the VP and if the VP is much, much greater than uh, VC, uh, such a state, if this criteria is followed, means all these four criteria are followed, uh, such state is to be called as a plasma state. Even in the case of the plasma nowadays, uh, the cold plasmas are also synthesis, uh, uh, what you can say, developed uh, in the uh, laboratory. The meaning of the uh, cold plasma, they don't having any thermal energy. So this is this will also give you the stable state, uh, the stable at the cooler temperature. And these kinds of the cold plasma is widely used in the medicine as well as in the uh, food packaging industry. And even IPR has also developed a special type of the uh, plasma and the plasma pen. Uh, so the cold plasma is also visualized uh, in the universe and we can synthesize the cold plasma pen and we can use a type of the pen for uh, different uh, uh, purposes. So these are the, uh, what you can say, different uh, major applications of the plasma. Uh, plasma can be used in the computer chips and ICs, uh, computer hard, hard drive, uh, machine tools, electronics, medi medical um, uh, implants and the prosthetics, audio and the video tabs, aircrafts and automobile engineering, uh, printing on the plastic food container, energy effective uh, wind coatings, high efficiency window coating, safe uh, drinking water, uh, voice and data communication, communication components and anti-scratch and anti-glare coating uh, and uh, for the eyeglasses and uh, so on. So these are the major applications of the plasma. Plasma is widely useful for the lightning. Okay, and nowadays we are also aware that the plasma TV, okay, there is also uh, possible to avail. We can use the plasma uh, for the computer sc uh, TV screen. Uh, by the same way, the plasma is also useful for the lightening of the home. The different type of the cold plasma is used for the lightening of the home, home or we can say the holes and uh, so on. 
as i mentioned that the plasma is also useful for the water sterilization uh, when we look for the what you can say hues okay just like a swimming pool okay to purify the uh, water of the swimming pool the different type of the plasmas are used for these purposes even for the waste processing the uh, several types of the plasmas are used for uh, these purposes now as the the high temperature state is concerned. We have the plasma and other type of the plasma. They are to be called as an, the quark gluon plasma. The word itself suggests that it is made from the quark and the uh, gluon. Uh, so it is originated from the quantum uh, chromodynamics. Uh, this theory is to be called as a QCD theory, and it was proposed by Mary Gelman in 1963. The QCD is the theory describing strong interactions uh, play an important role in the supporting to the uh, standard model. So this theory is uh, uh, can say a lattice theory. It is different state of the quarks and the gluons as we know today. It is thought to exist around the 10 microsecond after the Big Bang. So the existence of this uh, gluon uh, plasma state was uh, uh, what you can say visualized at the time of the uh, birth of the universe. And we are aware that the Big Bang theory uh, is there. So at the beginning of this uh, Big Bang, uh, in a within few microseconds, this kind of uh, plasma state was visualized. The quarks and gluons were at two large densities and the temperature to be confined within the nucleon. Uh, so if you look for the, the existence of the plasma, we are aware that the ice, okay, if we cool down them, it is converted into the water. If we give them uh, uh, what say temperature, it is converted into the steam. Again, we are aware that they're having the hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen is isolated. Again, we are aware that hydrogen is made up of the proton and electron. And if you look for the, if we isolate the electron, the remaining part is the proton. And as we are aware that the proton is uh, nothing, but it is a quark and the gluon. So the, this plasma state is depends on the proton structures, or we can say the elementary particle that relates with the uh, proton. And these kinds of uh, things are to be called as an uh, uh, quark gluon uh, plasma. Uh, so quark gluon plasma and the big bang. Uh, theory predict that the critical temperature T0 is to be 150 to 200 MeV and the energy density E0 is to be approximately one uh, giga electron volt per FM3. As the universe expands and cools, the free quark and gluon from the stable particles as we know today. So you can see that the birth and the death of the stars, okay, these kinds of phenomena may also uh, taken place and in which we can uh, have the uh, quark gluon uh, plasma. Uh, so the what type of the futures this uh, quark gluon plasma have? Uh, the, the more we know about the QGP, the more we know about uh, our own universe. So we can avail the information about the birth and the expansion of the universe by using this uh, theory. The characterizations of the uh, uh, quark gluon plasma by electromagnetic radiation has only begun. The ongoing technology increased the collision energy, bringing, bringing the energy well above the threshold for formation of a uh, quark gluon uh, plasma. Uh, so we all are aware that the large ion polydor experiments, uh, the it purposes to detect the study of the QCP begins operations in 2007. So this theory is a very advanced theory to understand this uh, phase, plasma phase, or, uh, or we can say the uh, quark gluon uh, plasma phase. The experiments benefits from the experience is gained from the, uh, what you can say, RHIC used lead, the heaviest ion to be accelerated in the laboratory to maximize the signals for detecting the uh, quark gluon uh, plasma phase. So this is the uh, simulation uh, photographs of the quark gluon uh, plasma phase in which we having the ions. Uh, this is an, another photograph, okay, which was uh, taken recently taken in 2007 by the LHC experiments. And now uh, this is the one another uh, uh, important uh, phase uh, of a, a state of a matter. And as you, we are aware that this is a low temperature uh, state of a matter. So this state is to be called as an Bose-Einstein condensed state. This theory is to be called as an BS 
BEC theory, in the case of the BEC, it is a state of a matter of a dilute gas of the low densities. They are to be called as in bosons and cooled at the temperature very close to their absolute temperature. So when we look for the plasma, plasma deals with the high temperature. The BEC and uh, uh, Fermin theory is deals with the low temperature. And generally, we are planning to reach at the absolute temperature or whatever the phenomenon may take place in the case of a state of a matter at the uh, near absolute temperature. Under such conditions, a large fraction of bosons uh, occupy the lowest quantum state at which the point microscopic quantum phenomenon, uh, particularly the wave functions interference may take place and become it is uh, apparent uh, um, macroscopically. A BC is formed by cooling a gas of extremely low density, about the 100,000, uh, the density of a normal air or at the ultra low uh, temperature. So how we can form the BEC? Uh, this is the procedure or the requirement of the BEC. Uh, generally, the BEC was available or what can say generated by using the rubidium material. Rubidium was cooled uh, velocity in a gas of the rubidium. As it is cooled, the static material is on the left and the BEC state was on the right side. This experiment was performed, this theory was proposed by a great scientist, Albert Einstein, and our Indian scientist, uh, Satyendranath uh, Bose. Uh, so Bose predicted that the Bose-Einstein condensed state sometimes refers to as the fifth state of matter. So sometimes the BEC is to be considered as a fifth state of matter, the plasma is to be considered as a fourth state of uh, matter. In a BEC matter, the stops behaving in the independent particle and collapse into the single quantum state that can be described with a single uh, uh, uniform wave function. In a gas phase, the Bose-Einstein condensed state remain in unverified theoretical uh, predictions for many years. In 1995, the research group of the Eric uh, Cornell and the Carl Willema at the uh, University of Colorado, they have produced, or we can say they avail this uh, state experimentally. Uh, so this bose Einstein state is a colder than the solid uh, state. And it is available uh, very close to the absolute zero degree uh, temperature. Uh, this uh, state was uh, also available in the space in 2018, okay, recently, uh, July 2018, an experiment was uh, performed in, uh, by using the gas cloud of the rubidium atom and 10th millionth of the degree above the absolute temperature. Uh, so they had produced the Bose-Einstein uh, condensed state into the space. The experiment also now holds uh, the record of the coldest object we know uh, of in the space. So this uh, BC state is to be considered as a coldest state of the matter in the uh, space. So if we look to the, uh, the simulated uh, states of the BEC is represented uh, theoretically predictions. We avail this kinds of the uh, uh, photograph. And if we avail the BEC in the space, the experimental photographs is available by the simulation method. So these are the uh, some of the more photographs of the BEC state, which is observed in the space, which is available on the uh, what can say uh, on, on the earth at the uh, zero degree uh, temperature. So NASA has also availed this uh, uh, phase. Uh, it is a, a proof of the Bose-Einstein condensed state was discovered. So NASA has also discovered such type of the state and the three great scientists has won the Nobel Prize of the 2001 uh, to carry out the work on the BEC. So these are the three fellow, Eric Korn, uh, Kormel, Wolfram uh, Ketteril, and the Carl Willman. Uh, so this uh, experiment was performed at the uh, Harvard uh, University. So this BEC, okay, theory is very much useful on the, uh, uh, what you can say, light. Okay, and it is to be said that the light will lose their velocity. We are aware that the light is moved with a constant speed of three into uh, 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 three into ten raised to eight meter. But in the case of the BC, the the speed of the light is tremendously reduces, and it is reaches nearly to the seventeen meters per uh, second. Okay, so these kinds of uh, states are very much useful for the optical storage device, even in the case of the uh, re, uh, quantum computing, and even in the case of the telecommunication, uh, this state may be uh, useful. 
so uh, we can also generate a new kinds of the light by using the BEC. Uh, so these are the, some of the photographs. In the case of the uh, light, we are aware that the electromagnetic theory, e, um, uh, electromagnetic theory is used. But to represent the light in the BEC, we are using these kinds of uh, notation. So these are the light and the uh, what can say domains of the lights are observed by using the BEC theory. Now we are looking for an, another state of matter. This state is to be called as a fermionic condensed state. It is similar to the BEC state, but it is com uh, composed of an fermions. Okay, in the case of the Bose-Einstein condensed state, we have the bosons, but in the case of the fermionic condensed state, we have the fermions. And we are aware that the Pauli exclusion principle is prevent uh, by the fermions for entering the same quantum state, but a pair of the fermions can behave as a boson and multiple such pairs can then be same quantum state without any uh, restriction. Uh, so the fermionic condensed state is a supercute phase uh, formed by the fermionic particle at the low temperatures. It is related to the BEC or the bosonic atom under the similar conditions. Unlike the BEC, fermionic condensed states are formed using the fermion instead of the boson. The earliest recognized fermion condensed state describes the state of electrons in a, a, super, a superconductor. The physics of the other example, including the recent work in the fermionic atoms, is also uh, uh, analysis. The first atomic fermions condensed state was created by the Deboris gene in 2003 by using the chiral condensed state in the examples of a fermionic condensed uh, state. And that appears the theories of the massless fermions uh, with the chiral symmetry uh, backing. So this is a very recent theory, and we can uh, what can say represent the bosons and the fermions. In the case of the bosons, all the particles are at the bottom, but in the case of the fermions, they can move uh, freely in the case of an uh, fermionic state. So these are the uh, some of the simulated uh, state of the uh, fermion state and the the uh, fermionic condensed state. And you can see that how the uh, phase coherence is visualized in the case of this uh, BEC and EEC. Uh, now, uh, this is a one, okay, so as the uh, fundamental states of matter is concerned, we having this uh, phi type of the state, but now this is an another special type of the phase, which may also exist in the case of an matter. The difference in the uh, solid, liquid, and gas, we all are aware that all the atoms are represented by the spherical manner. But in the case of the liquid crystals, the shape of the atoms are uh, not the spherical. They are non-spherical, or we having a one special phase. In the case of the liquid crystal, this phase is to be called as an, uh, what can say, mesophase. Uh, so a liquid crystal is an intermediate uh, state between the crystalline uh, solid and the ordinary liquid phase. Uh, it is a condensed fluid phase uh, with the spontaneous uh, and isotropy. Uh, so when we look for the liquid crystals are the matter in state that has the properties between those of the conventional liquid and those of the solid phase. For instance, a liquid crystals may flow like a liquid, but its molecules may be oriented in a crystalline-like uh, way. Uh, so it is a state that occurs between a solid and a liquid. It uh, possesses the properties, characteristics of both the liquid and the crystalline phase. All possess the properties not found in either liquid or the uh, solid may respond to the external uh, perturbation and some change in color with the uh, temperature. So uh, this discovery of the liquid crystal was done by the Fred uh, Frederick Ranger in 1888, and he has used the cholesterolic uh, benzonite, and he has developed the uh, cholesterolic uh, liquid crystals in the laboratory. So when we look for this uh, uh, li liquid, uh, liquid crystals, so it is a crystalline solid melt sharp at the single temperature, well-defined temperature to produce the liquid phase. This phase is to be called as an uh, mesophase. So mesophase possesses an order structure, so when we look for the liquid crystals, we having the different three types of uh, uh, liquid crystals. One is to be called as a semitic liquid crystal, nematic liquid crystals, and the cholesterolic uh, liquid crystal. So they, they, they are uh, to be called as a thermotropic liquid. The nematic, semitic, and cholesterolic are the uh, thermo 
uh, thermotropic uh, uh, liquid. Again, the uh, lytro, uh, lyotropic uh, liquid crystals are also there and uh, they don't have any other uh, class. So how the atoms are, uh, what you can say, arranged in the uh, case of an isotropic liquid, the nematic uh, liquid crystals and the semitic liquid crystal and the cholesterolic liquid crystal. In the case of these uh, semitic liquid crystals, the uh, cigar-like uh, uh, atom is arranged in a linear manner. But in the case of the nematic phase, all the uh, columns are, what I can say, arranged and the uh, some orientations of the atoms are a uh, little bit different than the, uh, means they are not started from the, uh, what I can say, one line. In the case of the cholesterolic crystals, the different uh, domains are uh, there. So this is the arrangement which we can visualize in the case of the uh, liquid crystals. Uh, the molecules are similar in the shape, also the point in one direction, but unlike the latter, they do not line up with the end lying on the parallel planes. So this is the real photographs of a, a nematic liquid crystal. Uh, so these are the more photographs. Several types of the uh, nematic liquid crystals are uh, synthesized by many people. Now, in the case of the semitic liquid, you can see that what type of the arrangements they have. They consist of the cigar-shaped molecule, uh, which line up the long axis of the molecule aligned. Okay. Uh, so in the case of these, you can see that what type of the arrangement is there in the case of a semitic liquid. So this is the arrangement of the semitic liquid crystal. Uh, so in the case of the cholesterolic liquid crystal, it consists of a long flat molecule which line up in the same manner as the nematic uh, molecule with the molecular long axis parallel to the each other in the plane. The molecule in one plane are uh, slightly displaced uh, due to the side group of the molecule. With respect to those in the neighboring plane uh, to form a helical pattern. So, the, in the case of this, the cholesterolic liquid crystals having uh, this kind of arrangement. So, cholesterolic liquid crystal is also uh, what you can say developed by our great Indian scientist, Nobel winner, uh, Professor S. Chandrasekhar. He was with the Raman Research Institute at uh, uh, I, uh, in IIC campus at uh, Bangalore. Uh, here, I had also attended one lecture of uh, uh, Professor S. Chandrasekhar at IIC uh, Mumbai and in 1993. Uh, so this discovery was done in 1977. He has developed the uh, what you can say liquid crystals in the laboratory. So these are the some of the applications of the liquid crystals. They are useful for uh, flat screen television, wristwatch, laptop screen, uh, digital clocks, uh, thermometers, switchable windows. So these are the several applications of the uh, liquid crystals. Uh, so you can see that in the laptop and so on. They are also useful for the, uh, what can say, thermoware. Okay. Uh, in the case of this, the liquid crystals are widely used even for availing the information about the uh, battery uh, testing strip, uh, the Duracell. Uh, they are using this kind of the liquid uh, uh, crystal strip through which we can avail the information about the uh, charging and the discharging. Uh, we can also avail the liquid crystal thermometer, even in the case of this uh, uh, liquid swap. Okay, the liquid crystals are also uh, used. Uh, so these are the more applications of the uh, liquid crystal. So the one more state is uh, there in the case of the uh, matter. It is a special, uh, what you can say, state of a matter. The state is to be called as a colloidal science. Again, it is a multidisciplinary branch. The, the meaning of the colloidal science is uh, the dimensions of atoms are not as per their atomic ready. Okay, in the case of the majority of the, what you can say, uh, atom periodic table, we are aware that the atomic ready is fixed and we can avail the size of the atom in that regime. But if the size of the atom is beyond this range, they are to be called as a colloidal state. So the regime of this uh, uh, colloidal state is in the range of 10 raised to minus 9 meter to the micrometer, means it is in the range of 10 raised to minus 9 to 10 raised to minus 6. Uh, so in the case of this colloidal state, we having the uh, different, uh, uh, what you can say, uh, classes, the different uh, nine uh, types of the colloidal states are there. These are the examples of these uh, colloidal states, the foam, milk, uh, fog, aerosol, blood cells, uh, paint, uh, even majority of the detergents, uh, lipsticks and the cosmetics, they are using the colloidal states on a larger scale. Uh, so uh, in the case of the uh, colloidal state, we have the two phases. One is to be called as a dispersing phase and second is to be called as a dispersed phase. On the basis of that, as I mentioned that we having the different uh, eight uh, uh, type of the uh, colloids 
if the solid is the dispersed uh, phase and the solid is the dispersed phase, they are to be called as in, uh, solid gel. Solid liquid is to be called as in sols. Liquid solids are to be called as in gel. Liquid liquids are to be called as an emulsion. Solid gas is to be called as an aerosol. Liquid gas is to be called as an aerosol of liquid. Gas solid is to be called as in solid form and gas liquid is to be called as in form and the fourth. Gas and gas is not to be considered as an uh, colloidal state. So these are the, some of the uh, examples of the colloidal uh, state. I think uh, due to the limitations of time, I think I have to summarize the uh, lecture. In the case of the collides, we have the sole aerosol and emulsion. We'll not go in much details related to the uh, collide. We have the uh, hypo, hydrophobic and hydrophobic uh, type of the colloidal state. These are the some of the applications of the uh, colloidal state in which the the, the all the eight types of the colloidal states are used. Uh, so gel is a popular state, colloidal state. Uh, I think uh, we will not go in much details. We are familiar with the gel. Uh, in the case of the gel, we have the elastic and non-elastic gel. Now in the case of the emulsions, uh, we are aware that it is the liquid into the liquid and we are using the two emulsion uh, liquid in the case of the emulsion in the presence of an emulsifying agent. Uh, so Vaseline and the different type of the cosmetic uh, material, they are using the emulsion on a larger scale. Uh, so these are the examples of the uh, emulsion, ice cream, the margarine, uh, metal uh, cutting oil, and the uh, phosphorus, even the pond cream, okay, they also are the examples of an emulsion. And the form which is uh, in the drinking, uh, uh, what you can say, socio and uh, uh, Coca-Cola, uh, the foam created, the, it is also an example of an uh, emulsion. Uh, so in the case of the emulsions, we have the simple emulsion, oil in water, water in oil, multiple emulsion, oil in water in oil, water in oil in oil, uh, water, and we also having the micro emulsion. So if we draw the phase diagrams of the emulsion, they are having the different three phases, the water phase, oil phase, and the surfactant uh, phase. Okay, I think, uh, 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 this is uh, the idea through which we can avail the different state of a matter uh, and the special uh, state of a matter. So thank you for your uh, kind uh, attention. Thank you.